Uh, hello, uh, my name is Jane Williams. I'm subject leader for equine science at Hartbury College. And I also teach a lot of the reproductive based modules. Um, I think it's really important when we're looking at our ridden horses and particularly mares that we have a, a really good working knowledge of what the reproductive system is and how the reproductive cycle can impact on ridden behaviour so we can optimise the management and performance of our horses. So what we've done here on the mare is we've drawn on a representation of a reproductive system and starting from the back end you can come through, you've got the vagina coming through into the vestibule, you can see the bladder and the bladder joining into the vestibule area so obviously urine can go through and go out. The black line here represents the cervix which is the boundary from the outer reproductive system if you like, the area which is communicating with the environment and the inner working. So we go from the cervix into the uterine body into the uterus and in the horns of the uterus and there's two of them you can see the second one here and then that flows up into the oviduct or the fallopian tube and this sort of sits and cradles the ovary which is the yellow object behind. What you can also see here is the kidney so you can see that the ovary sits behind the kidney. What you can also see is this black line coming down represents the broad ligament. The ovaries and the uterus are held in place by a large ligament and tissue which sort of keeps them suspended within the abdomen so they can move a little bit but they're not going all over the place because obviously that would be quite uncomfortable for the horse generally. And then at the top here we've got the rectum. The horse is what we call a seasonal polyesterous animal. This means that she has a breeding season specifically related through to light and how long the days are and temperature. It also means she has repeated seasons within that period. So in the UK the breeding season runs from March time to about October time. Uh, and during that period your horse will continually cycle. The average Easter cycle is about 21 days in length and it will, if she's not pregnant, she'll just keep coming back and back into season. During the period um, from November through to February there shouldn't be any hormonal or seasonal activity uh, and what we start to see coming towards early March is we get into something called transition which is where the reproductive system starts to get ready for seasons again. So you'll start to see some seasons coming through and during this period they might be quite irregular uh, or they might be shorter than what you normally see. One of the things that we don't always consider when we're looking at the management of our horses, we keep them a lot of days now in um, American barns where we have lights on all the time and the actual breeding season of the horse is linked into daylight periods. So if we're keeping our electric lights on then quite often in the winter months we're actually mimicking daylight hours. So therefore nowadays we can see horse horses that are cycling quite a long way through. So sometimes you might be seeing mareish behaviour or easterish related behaviour at times of the year when we wouldn't normally say that the mare has got a breeding season. During the first part of the oestrus cycle when the mare is actually coming into oestrus and the follicles are developing, you have the follicles developing on the ovary and all of the reproductive system is going to be quite swollen and it becomes inflamed. Now if you look at the saddle and where it is in relation to the ovary, you can see that the ovary sits at the sort of lumbar vertebrae level and it isn't actually impinged by the saddle at all. Um, what does happen though is because of all of this swelling and the, the fluid filling that's going on within the uterus and also within the ovary, it can make the general abdomen, abdominal area of the mare quite painful. So she's all inflamed around and through here. So it's making her quite uncomfortable. When you think about the rider in this case, the rider shouldn't, as I say, impact onto the ovary, but when they're actually asking the mare to go forward, then what you'll see is as the leg goes on, she might be a little less forward going in a bit less reactive than she normally is. Now if the rider then turns around and keeps putting the leg on uh, and keeps sort of hitting and kicking away, um, what you can then happen is causing discomfort and pain within the abdomen so that the mare is less likely to go forward and then may get more stuffy, go backwards or you might see misbehaviour, she might uh, show what we classically describe as mareish behaviour as being a little bit out of sorts. In some ways what you could argue in this sort of scenario is that uh, very clear concise aids so and maybe the use of a spur could be quite useful so you can just put the aid on and ask her to go forward rather than repetitive kicking on an area which is quite swollen and inflamed and sore. With oral progesterone supplementation you feed it daily to mimic the diestrous stage of the cycle. So you would put them on oral supplementation from say day 0 to 14 and then you need to allow them to have a break to actually come into the normal season. So obviously in terms of um, competition preparation, you would time that alongside when your key competitions were. So you would need to make sure that that four to five day break isn't when you're going off to your show jumping around or your dressage competition. 
Other management approaches that we can take can take more of a natural approach to this. Within the wild, the mare is a selective browser, so she will go around and she'll eat different herbs and different grasses at different stages of the year. Now, obviously, when she's coming into season and she's got the inflammation going on within the reproductive area, um, she'll look for herbs which have an anti-inflammatory impact. So there's a lot of herbal supplements on the market which you can use which can reduce that inflammation and the impact of the inflammation within the reproductive system and also help to just normalise the cycle. And the benefit of them is they can obviously be fed all year round or just for the breeding season depending on your individual mare and how often she comes in to seed. With the nutritional supplements, and these are available from commercial feed stores, and you can also again turn for advice to the commercial companies and speak to the health lines and get some extra advice and information about how to manage your mare during the oestrus period. So hopefully this has helped to give you an oversight of the reproductive system in the mare and how that can impact on behaviour and ridden performance. Um, thank you for listening.